Crisis 3 ist sicherlich einer der Ego-Shooter-Titel, die First-Person-Shooter-Fans ganz, ganz weit oben auf ihrer Wunschliste haben. Zumal der Titel ja aus Deutschland kommt, aber natürlich von einem internationalen Team an Experten gefertigt wird. Ja, und nachdem Crisis 2 schon alles an Preisen abgeräumt hat, geht es jetzt in die dritte Runde. Wir haben uns mit einem der Entwickler unterhalten können und der erzählt euch was Neues. My name is Rasmus Hoingo, I'm Director of Creative Development at Crytek and you're work watching Ford Zucker on Animax. The greatest city on earth. Now a spawn of jungle and ruins. They forced us out for the good of mankind. <laughs> But the Ceph aren't gone. The game takes place 20 years after the end of Crisis 2, and in that time, Cell, one of the organizations you're fighting, has gained a lot of power, so much power, in fact, that they're very close to global domin domination, which is a really bad thing. So what they've done is they've erected all these nanodomes over a number of big cities, and what these nanodomes do is cleanse the cities uh, off of any Ceph pollution, but what they really do is keep people out so that um, they in peace can do research and get you know all the technology technological advancements that Seth have and use them to their advantage and this is a bad thing uh, because they're a greedy and power hungry corporation you play profit and profit has had this vision and this vision is of earth without any humans on it basically only Seth and he's made it his personal mission to make sure that that does not come to fruition so he's um, and being the loyal soldier that he's been up to this point inside that didn't lead me anywhere I'm now going to take matters in my, into my own hands and he's basically going to do anything it takes to make sure that this doesn't happen uh, and that means basically hunting down and killing everything that stands between him and succe successfully avoiding the situation of Seth taking over the world. So you play inside one of these nanodomes, it's called the Liberty Dome and it's the one covering New York City. In that we have seven themes that we call the seven wonders of the rainforest and each of them are visually different to and tonally different to kind of push certain story beats and also they are laid out very differently so they encourage different types of gameplay. Cells dividing their forces. It's your call how you want to do this. It's the first time you actually play Prophet, right? But he's been in the franchise since Crisis 1. Um, he's, he's very different because he's been infused so much with Ceph technology. He's even tried to kill himself. That's how kind of frustrated he is about the situation of him trying to do the right thing. And uh, in terms of gameplay and so on, uh, we're really pushing hard this theme of being the hunter. So we equipped him with this very cool bow, which apart from being able to be fired while you're cloaked, it also has a multitude of different warheads you can equip it with that all have different functionalities. It's basically like a very expensive, very fancy Swiss army knife that you can use for a number of different things. You're also able to fire Ceph weapons and he can do that because, again, he's kind of part Ceph to some extent because he has all this uh, Ceph material as part of his body. Um, so that when he picks up a Ceph weapon, it kind of reads his fingerprint as, D as Ceph DNA and that's why he can fire it. Um, and he's able to hack things in the environment and depending on what you hack and when you can use that like strategically when you go in and play the, the levels. One thing that kind of characterized both Crisis 1 and Crisis 2 was that at the get-go they were kind of realistic. Yeah, they, it, it, the nano suit was there and that was kind of a sci-fi thing, but it felt very much like a shooter and, uh, in the beginning in Crisis 2 until the aliens really show themselves. It kind of feels like a military shooter. This setting is much different. It's um, The whole concept of this nanodome is really pushing sci-fi hard but it does it within a very recognizable and realistic setting because it's New York, uh, but it's New York completely overgrown, like not just bushes and trees here and there, completely overgrown and destroyed. And that is uh, that has been really interesting because 
In Crisis 1, we kind of ha had to adhere to what's realistic on a tropical island. In Crisis 2, we had to adhere to what's realistic in an urban capital. But now, because of the nanodome and because of that sci-fi layer, we can take each of these things, we can put them together, and we can push it much further than we could before, which is an awesome opportunity for a developer in terms of being creative, but also in terms of getting some amazing visuals and some very high level of variety in the, in this, in the levels and so on. Best is going to spiel. So really you don't want to win any rewards uh, awards unless you've done a really good job, right? So we just always really push for quality and and uh, make sure that we we leverage both gameplay and technology and visuals uh, equally. And if we win an award for doing so, that's just really great. Um, but we're not happy until we're happy with what we're doing. But if we're happy with what we're doing and we win awards for it, that's just really awesome because that means that other people are, are happy with it as well. So um, it's kind of like just, a, I guess, an external appreciation of quality when you get an award and that always feels good. So. Uh, Soweit also der Stand der Dinge in Sachen Crisis 3. Bis man es dann wirklich final zocken und kaufen kann, dauert es leider noch ein bisschen. Ist erst im Frühjahr soweit, aber auf dem richtigen Weg ein ziemlicher Hit zu werden, würde ich sagen. Und dann werden wir es sicherlich auch hier in unserer wunderschönen Sendung anspielen. Was wir schon angespielt haben, das sind auch zwei Spiele, die auch erst in weiter Zukunft erscheinen. Aber wir sind halt so wipmäßig unterwegs. Wir haben sie schon zocken dürfen, nämlich zum Beispiel Lost Planet 3 das wieder in eisige Gefilde, Gefilde geht. Mhm. Außerdem den Reboot der Devil May Cry Serie DMC. Das haben wir auch für euch im Programm, beziehungsweise hatten wir schon. Wenn ihr es verpasst habt, solltet ihr auf jeden Fall reinklicken. In diesem Sinne, tschüss.